in June of this year, a client received a program from me that included a racial slur. Some of the most bizarre behaviors ooze out of the fitness industry, and we've covered a lot of them on this channel, from scams to murder to some pretty crazy stuff like resisting arrest by the police, as well as men and women turning themselves into ogres. Today, we're gonna cover racial slurs being shouted out by a female activist in the fitness space. What do you mean by that? Yeah, that's gonna sound really crazy, and you're gonna hear all about her in this video. And I think it's gonna be one of the more interesting videos I've done. You might not really care, but I think if you watch till at least three quarters of the way through this video, you're gonna really find a reason to care. So the lovers have an issue. They soon move in together and accumulate all of the hate on the internet you could imagine. Anne Walls is a power lifter, a biomechanics specialist, and a coach that helps shy girls get used to getting in the gym and stronger and presumably a better physique. I don't really know what it is at this point because her Instagram profile is a little bit precarious as to what she's really trying to accomplish, but she posts content in an idea, at least, of getting people into a funnel, of which is her coaching funnel, likely to hire her as a coach to build strength and not be so shy anymore, or something like that, allegedly. Now, why might I call her a female activist within the fitness space? Well, in many posts, she talks about being very inclusive within the fitness community. As an influencer who gets to choose like what brand they work with, what message they want to help spread, what they want to put out there, I just decided that that's not something i want to be a part of that is not the culture that i want to create for the gym um especially because i feel like the lgbtq plus community the plus size people people of color are already like way underrepresented in the gym community getting more people to be in it of all sorts of shapes and sizes specifically lbgq lbgqt lgb lgbt boy editor please put this here legitimately i don't know what it is um but not that i hate on them i just don't know what it is anyways she likes to get these people into the fitness community and hopefully creating a supportive system for them to feel inclusive which i think is a good message i think getting more people involved into fitness is a generally really good idea but you can really tell her activism shine when she does things like drop her sponsor young la from the head designer at young la giovanni because he said a obvious slur which was a homophobic slur the f word and another thing to your fleets that are posting oh. this and i mean bundle of sticks not gay because i have a lot of gay friends i mean as we here in uh, YouTube land like to say it. In this video, which I will show as I'm talking, she briefly discusses how she really wants this space to be more positive and an inclusive environment, and that she could never ignore the impact of actions and words such as these on the community at large, and therefore she has chosen not to be with Young LA anymore because it doesn't align with her moral code. This is beautiful, great message, awesome, I think, very cool. Now I also do believe in freedom of speech and i've certainly said a handful of probably not so agreeable things and as i'm sure everyone has on the entire internet and world at large but there's definitely ways that people do this kind of thing in very inconsiderate and destructive ways right like, like calling people things in public and just shouting at their faces is one thing writing other things down and giving it to people uh, as a way of defining their name is also really bad right there's some really really bad Bad things you can say and there's some really not bad things but are kind of bad that you can say they're all bad but not all as bad this is i'm giving you like a fucking kindergarten level education on bad words at this point fuck <laughs> fuck <laughs> fuck there's just some things you can't say in this society, specifically in America, okay? We don't like, I don't mind, but other people don't like certain words to be said. One of those happens to be the F word, okay? Not the F-U-C-K word, but the other F word. But shortly after she announced herself leaving Young LA because of some homophobic slurs being said on someone's story, she got some stuff leaked by a previous client. That wasn't great. You see, Anne built a program for a client a long time back, and 
this client was really dissatisfied. So dissatisfied, in fact, she took screenshots of everything and made sure to send it pretty much everywhere that she could. And in those screenshots, you'll see very clearly that the client's name on the program has labeled itself as first name hate, last word, N word that I cannot say with a straight up hard R, balls deep in the hard R in this one. Upon receiving this program, the client admitted that she felt extremely uncomfortable and was not okay with this situation as it felt wrong and inappropriate. In which Anne made a really well-crafted reply to the client. This reply seemed very generic and not very heartfelt as if someone human was to speak it. I mean, God knows if I had sent something like this to a client, I would immediately be refunding them. I would be explaining to them that this is entirely my fault and a complete lapse of behavior. And I am extremely embarrassed and I can only hope that they understand my intention was not to hurt or harm them in any way. But instead, the very first text that she sends over is one blaming an employee that she has, which well, I don't know why you'd have staff building programs for you, but apparently her staff, which to be honest, again, I don't think someone of this caliber would even have staff. She doesn't seem like she has a business model that's going to survive the ability to employ staff, but maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know. I doubt that she has it. Anyways, she says that the staff did it, not her. Funny enough, those replies continue as the client says she's not comfortable to proceed with coaching. She crafts a beautiful reply, something that is completely void and cold to the touch, almost as if it's created by an AI. And in fact, she did admit that this reply was completely AI generated. You see, she didn't know what to say, so she used ChatGPT, prompted it with the client's response, and then copy and pasted that response. Another thing that I am very embarrassed for that I need to take full accountability for is my response to the situation once my client confronted me. Um, I, it's not an excuse, but I was shocked and embarrassed about the situation, so I did turn to ChatGPT for some help. I do think this was a mistake on my part and an inappropriate way to respond to the situation, and all I can do now is take accountability for it. So that being said, moving forwards, I just want to put it out there that I do not condone this kind of behavior. I do have to take accountability and responsibility for it, and that my goal in the fitness community is still just to bring inclusivity to this space. Um, and I just hope that this can be a learning opportunity because, you know, inclusivity and stuff. As advanced as ChatGPT is, I don't think it's advanced enough to replace human compassion and true human embarrassment about a situation as severe as this. I also don't think ChatGPT would make the mistake of putting the hard R in someone's training program. Later, obviously, as of refusing to work with this coach, or coach, I should put quotations around that, she leaked these photos and screenshots to Goob. And if you don't know Goob, he is someone we've all grown to love on Instagram, posting basically everything about everyone that is going to ruin and discredit their entire career, which is good and bad. There's a lot of crazy stuff that happens when he exposes someone. And I mean crazy, like death threats and all of it, which gets a little bit hectic and I don't necessarily agree with, but I do think it's good to expose people like pedophiles and people who have sexually assaulted other people and a lot of other scams in the industry. And now look, I'm not saying I'm perfect, right? As Theo Vaughn said, sometimes you just gotta write it out. Dude, we just had a a guy come in here and, and drop the n-word man we cannot be laughing about this shit right now oh i don't think that shit's funny at all what i do is if i really need to get it out i write it down what the fuck? But I won't be the guy publishing any kind of slur or any misappropriate information within any of my clients' programs, let alone anything I publish on the internet or anywhere where people can see it. Does that mean I have a journal where I just hate write the hard R everywhere? <laughs> no, it doesn't. That does not. I don't have that. That'd be wild, though. That shit would be so wild. Oh, my God. <laughs> However, it doesn't stop there because if it did, we would have just enough to talk about for a video. But I want to make this a really good video. And it's gotten even worse. You see, her boyfriend, actually, Anne's boyfriend, has currently entered in this situation as well. You see, Anne seems to like men like she likes her labeling tactics, inappropriate and completely disconnected from the rest of society. Queen? No, thank you. I take it black. Like my men. 
Nico Flores, her boyfriend, enters the stage with some pretty serious offenses here. Nico was a stage five grifter back in his youth, taking advantage of pretty much everyone he ever knew. He used his social media content by leveraging his friends and the community that he was in to create that content, furthermore then leveraging the subscriptions from his young audience that they could not cancel upon requesting him to cancel their subscriptions to group access for different program types. He went as far as anyone could probably go with being disingenuous and harming other people's lives. He actually had to move out of his hometown due to so many people disagreeing with his behavioral tactics. But Nico continues to dig himself a hole from here. Nico wanted to start a business called the Garden Threads. It was going to be a clothing business that you typically see on Instagram ads. Oversized t-shirts for gym bros, the kind of thing that you pick up for $25 and then move on about your day and forget it's coming. And then two weeks later, you're shocked that there's a present at your door, you open it and you're like, oh my gosh, I bought this so long ago I forgot. And then you never wear it again. Yeah, one of those companies. But of course, he didn't have the skills required to develop this company. So he had to commission some of his friends once again. This friend was Jeff Co, someone who is pretty familiar with media in the fitness space and is a videographer by the description of his Instagram. You see, Nico needed him to do the graphic designing and most of the laborious work because, well, Nico just didn't have time with all the content creation. It seems like for the American dream, there's at least one Asian guy doing pretty much the majority of the work for everyone else. So Jeff Co takes this offer, moves across the country to help Nico, and is now in Dallas, in which he would start the business, The Garden. Sadly, after months of work and laborious work, as I had said, doing most of what the work consisted of to generate a clothing company from start to finish, which to tell you the very honest truth, I've tried many times and failed. It is a very hard endeavor, not easy to do. Nico failed to pay Jeff anything, not a single dime for all the work he did, even after he had moved out there to help him start this business. Something in which Nico promised would be a massive money scapegoat for them in the future. This resulted in Jeff having to move out and move back to his home state, where he proceeded to sue Nico for the money that he hadn't paid him. A lawsuit which is still undergoing rate now and is showing signs that it's going to be very favorable towards Jeff's side, thankfully. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. And don't you worry, we're going to bring it all the way back around to Anne here very soon. What started this entire blowout was that he double-crossed an old friend named Kevin Papa. This is a reoccurring trait we're starting to see with Nico's behavior. Kevin Papa owned a supplement store labeled 110% Supplements. Nico was working at 110 Supplements as a content creator, and at the same time, he was also worked for a content creator for a rival company in the area. Again, this is all whilst working for his friend Kevin. In so, he was likely using the tactics employed for his friend's business with the competitor, giving them an unfair advantage over his friend Kevin. Then, shortly after this, he offered one of his friends, Ethan, a huge bonus for publishing the content from the gardens on his profile to promote it and be an influencer. Do what influencers do. And in response, what did Nico do? Well, we tend to see this over and over again. Nico didn't pay anybody. He didn't pay a bonus. The guy posted a lot about his company and in return got zero dollars. So now let's bring this back all the way full circle to Anne. The program that Anne sent her client was not hers, but it also wasn't Nico's. She wasn't actually lying about this part. If you look closely at it, it's easy to identify that these templates are Steve DeNovi's program, which at the time was Nico's coach. So likely either Nico sent it to her with the hard R included as a joke, or she put it in there as a joke between them. If you don't know, Steve DeNovi is a really well-renowned strength coach. He coaches many people to very successful placings within national levels, a commendable person at best, and he seriously does do great programming. However, when compared to the teenage lovers, Anne and Nico, I think they pale in comparison. And they definitely know that, because why else would you copy a coach's program? So the lovers have an issue. They soon move in together, and 
and accumulate all of the hate on the internet you could imagine just to be in an isolated bubble by themselves after destroying all of their friendships, after breaking moral codes and destroying the bonds in which they created over an entire lifetime. So what am I telling you all of this for? What, what's the point behind it? It's actually pretty simple, and I would have hoped that you would have learned it by now, but I see this as a reoccurring theme, and I'm sure you do too. It's that resumes are not created by followers, by beautiful marketing on social media, by having a good social media presence. Having fancy videos explaining things doesn't make you a great coach. I think experience makes you a great coach. Just because you have a six-figure follower count doesn't make you a thought leader in any particular industry. I would even argue that those kind of people aren't even influential. They are just people, flawed and impaired like many of us. Even more so, they get this delusion that the followers actually represent some kind of fame and reputation. And look, I'm not saying I'm any better. I'm here publishing videos. But to be honest, I really enjoy making these videos. And another part of it is I want to use these as teaching moments, not necessarily as, oh, look at me, I'm better than everybody else, but as a moment to say, hey, look at these people, look what they're doing. Hopefully you can learn from it. Sadly, like I said, this is often a repeatable trait that we see within many fitness influencers and life coaches and all sorts of crazy shit. What works as a resume is years of work and testimonials and very happy fucking clients in any business model. But what do you think? Am I right? Or is this completely bullshit that I'm pulling out of my ass like an infinite toilet paper loop? Which if they had one of those, I think that would actually be pretty great because I shit a lot. If you like this video, comment, like, and subscribe. It does me a massive favor. It really does, you guys. It pushes me into the algorithm. And when I get into the algorithm, your boy actually gets exposure for once. And YouTube loves those delicious subscribes. I don't know why. It's kind of weird, actually, if you think about it, like the in-depth meaning of it all. It's very, very interesting. But I do need help. So if you could subscribe, it's free to you. And it helps me so, so much. I mean, just literally a click of your button helps me massively. And if you're interested in a Discord group where we talk about a lot of things such as this, as well as how to actually coach people, feel free to click that link down below as well. I'll catch you in the next video.